a blessed Easter and a blessed Wednesday to us. It is always a good thing, one of the many dimensions of the celebration of Easter you know, is its extension, as we always call it, the octave, no? uh, from our expression in Cebuano, na octava, no, na postpone, because a day is not enough to celebrate this very heart of our faith. And actually, there are only two uh, what we call solemnities or celebrations in the church calendar that have an octave. Okay, the Christmas, we have an octave, and the uh, Easter season. Now, both, both seasons are called Pasco. Pasco sa pagkatao, o Pasco sa pagkabanhaw. Okay, the central element of which is the Pasco, or the Pasch, or the passing over. And so this is a very great moment that we continue to celebrate with hearts burning, just like the hearts of the two disciples going to the road uh, to Emmaus. In, most especially when we are listening or reading the words of God, the scriptures. And it is always in this context that we are constantly being taught. Daghan kayo nga mga punto nga pahinumdum o pagtulunan. For example, the first reading today, there is this a clear mention of the three o'clock hour of prayer no, that they do in the temple. Yes, of course, it's not the divine mercy yet. Bagoran ng divine mercy, three o'clock prayer. But it is always a constant reminder that in the lives of the Jewish people and of the first Christians, they were part and parcel of what the temple was all about, the activities there. Despite Jesus' death and resurrection you know, after he ascended to heaven, they continued to do all these things, just like us. You know, whether it's in season or out of season, we continue to do, to pray, to go to Mass and read scriptures. Then another thing is, there are so many beautiful moments here if we try to recall that long journey, and I hope I won't be long today. It's a journey that is always a teaching regarding scriptures and the Eucharist, the liturgy of the Word and the liturgy of the Eucharist. But what is so significant here, one significant thing is when Jesus explained to them as they were walking on the way, he was not just quoting one particular book. He was actually teaching them, reminding them of the Old Testament. Wala pa no Old Testament atong panahuna because the New Testament was not yet there. We cannot say Old Testament if there is no New. But he was referring to the Hebrew or the Jewish scriptures. And how, how is this scripture called? Moses and the prophets. So Moses and the prophets practically contains how many books there are. So he was reviewing to them. And I hope in our lifetime, we will be able to avail ourselves of the opportunities and the occasions to review the teachings of the scriptures about our faith, about our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is always part and parcel of our lives. Call it a day that is not complete without reading a scripture passage. I challenge you to do that because every day in our lives, scripture is always the first step in order to enter into the experience and the reality of the God who works in our lives day in and day out, in special times and in very simple times and ordinary times. So the challenge is always given. Take a look into what Moses and the prophets and the scriptures are telling us. That's the Old Testament. But we also have the New Testament. We have a whole lifetime to read the sacred scriptures. Ayaw lang ninyo basaha o tingog-tingog kay makuyapan mo siguro mo, matukan mo, no? Take it one step at a time. One passage or one narrative at a time. The whole lifetime that we have practically is not even enough because to read is not just the thing that we do. We have to understand it. We have to experience it. And it takes a lifetime to do that. I hope you take the challenge. And I always say, Amen. <laughs>